there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at the Zen Art Supplies Aspiring Artist watercolors. This is one of four sets I believe they offer in the student grade line, and we're going to have a look at them and see if they may be right for you. Um, so let's get to it. Here we have the uh, box that came in, uh, kind of a matte paperboard. It's got the swatch on the back. These were sent to me from Zen Art Supplies. They're available on Amazon, and at the time that I'm recording, they are selling for, I think it's $22.95. $22.95 and there is a $6 off coupon available. So it runs around um, $17. So what we have here is a metal tin inside and some paperwork. So we'll just put all this stuff out. Uh, the metal tin is kind of flimsy and it actually came to me crushed and I was able to push out some of the dent. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, I obviously, the, the quality, I can review the paints without having a perfect tin. I just want to let you know that it's kind of crushed on the side, which doesn't make it possible for me to perfectly press out the, the dent in there. But um, that's an op, that's a, that's a kind of a common occurrence when Amazon sends these um, kind of less sturdy tins in the bubble mailers. They just tend to get crushed. Um, so if that happens, they it does say there's a one year warranty here. Um, so I would imagine they would replace that for you if you got a dented tin. Um, I don't know because I didn't purchase this. This was sent to me for review. Uh, we have um, the different swatches here of the different varieties of colors they offer. They offer a, um, a smaller tin here, and I'm looking on Amazon, that one appears to be out of stock right now, so, uh, so I'm not sure what that one sells for typically, but it's a limited palette of 12 colors. It looks like you have a split primary, although the, I don't know if the swatches are accurate, because if I look at this, you've got a crimson, which I think is their cool red, then you've got an orange, which could be your warm red, if it's red enough, then you've got a gamboge, which is a warm yellow, and a hansa yellow that should be a cool yellow, and then you've got an ultramarine that could be a warm blue, and then you've got a turquoise that could be a cool blue, um, or you've got a Prussian blue that could be a, a cool blue cool blue, you've got a Viridian, a raw umber, yellow ochre, you know, so you do have a pretty good balanced palette there if you wanted to try a smaller set and see if you um, if you like them before going ahead and getting a larger set. Um, I chose the Allegro set because it's got colors with cooler undertones and more strong primaries, so I figured this would be a little bit, um, a little bit better for me as far as mixing. Then they've got the Sereno set, which looks a little bit more uh, warmer undertone colors. It had some colors in here that I thought were just going to be way too muddy, so that's why I didn't go with that. You have, actually, it looks like there isn't, uh, I don't really see uh, duplication between these colors, so if you do love these, you could buy both of them and not have, um, and not have duplicates. Um, and then there is a metallic set called uh, Prezioso, Prezioso? Um, and that one's just all metallics if you enjoy these paints. Um, now these paints remind me a lot of the <laughs> Artistro paints I reviewed about a year ago and I didn't like them and I have to say sadly I really don't like these paints. Um, but I'm going to show you some artworks that I did with them and um, show you the swatches. Maybe you will disagree with me, maybe you'll like them. And if you have these and you like them, then I am glad. I want people to like the supplies they have. That's why I do these reviews. Um, just for me, I think there is way better ways to spend your money. Um, I just want to get that out right from the top, right from the start. So if you have these paints and you love them and they're meeting your needs, I am super happy and I would suggest that you that you stop, that you pause the video, or you go find something else to watch because um, I don't want to rain on anyone's parade if you love these paints. So the first ding was that the, the, the first ding was a literal ding. The, the package was dented. Um, now I decided to leave these, um, leave my palette messy just so you could kind of see the upside. I don't have any beading up on the palette. That was nice. Now I don't know if this will pick up on camera, but there is a certain amount of grittiness in the paints and it's not a true granulation. It's more of like a, um, a sedimentation, like an extender or a chalk that's in there, and I'll show you that in some of the finished artwork. Uh, on the swatch here, it does come with this little piece of plastic that can be used to, if you're packing up wet paints or if you want a little extra mixing space, so I like that. Um, 
The color selection is not bad. The colors are vibrant. Uh, that's that's a good thing. Now, if you look in the carmine, I'm not sure if the camera's going to pick that up or not, but there is a grit or a silt. It's like a silt. That's what it seems like, a silty quality in the fabric. The olive green has it. Um, ultramarine has, has it. I would expect ultramarine to granulate anyway. The colors are a little murky. You can see, like, if I painted over the words in a lot of these colors, there is a little bit of opacity to them. Um, but it's not really like a gouache. It's just more of like a, like a chalkiness, a chalkiness to it. But they're still vibrant paints, so I don't want to, you know, I don't want to say they're not vibrant. They're, it, they were pretty easy to activate. I did pre-spray them um, to make them a little easier to activate, but they're, you know, they're, you know what they are? I think they're the Simi Art paints that get rebranded under like Culture Hustle, allegedly under like Culture Hustle, Artistro, um, and a bunch of other different companies that kind of come out with these little pans that look like pillows. That's kind of like, um, kind of looks like a Simi Art uh, situation to me. The paints are in a flimsy paper, not paper, a flimsy plastic material, kind of like you would find in like toy packaging. And uh, this is too, I probably wouldn't recommend pulling them in and out just because I think this will crack after a while. I've had different um, different things like that that just get really brittle. It seems like the packaging similar to Koi has, like that kind of, uh, that cheaper insert. So, I mean, on the, on the upside, hopefully that means I'm putting all their money into the paint, not the packaging. Um, I used this brush once, the, uh, the flat that came with it, and it it started to kind of like, I don't know if you'd say it started to fray, but once the sizing was out and I was using it, I noticed like the, the edges almost look serrated, like it didn't keep its crisp chisel edge, and then this end, it's they're not evenly trimmed either. So the brush is not, um, it's not awesome. It's a Taclon, I would say, some sort of like synthetic. It says faux red sable. It seems to be like a golden Taclon, but it doesn't have a lot of hairs in it. The, the quality is not great. It comes with a decent water brush. The, this water brush is what I would expect. Uh, I got a little scrap of paper here, and um, I'm going to show you my, fur, my my major qualm with this, and it is the paint flow. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some water out on this cotton watercolor paper scrap here. I'll use it in a card or something, uh, you know, so it won't go to waste. So don't worry, I'm not just wasting cotton watercolor paper for for no reason. Um, so I'm just going to wet this here. You could do it with a regular brush. Uh, the water brush is fine, to be honest. I have no problems with the water brush. Then um, let's do like a rainbow and let's see like how well the paints flow. I'm just gonna give this a real quick spray with some water. It doesn't really need the water to pre-activate it, but it's um, it's not a bad idea when you're doing student with student grade paints. I'm gonna start off with, I'll start off with this pink. We'll see how that flows. It's actually flowing better than uh, than I, than I was getting with um, when I was using them in practice. Put some of this red in there. It's actually flowing a little bit better than I um, than I thought. Let's do a little of this uh, Juan Brilliant. That's kind of just staying where I leave it. Let's do more of like a lemony yellow. Now what I do like See, it's just not, it's not really flowing. A lot of the colors aren't flowing. That fuchsia flowed pretty well, but the others need a little coaxing. Um, the thing I do like is that they use colors that are, that are common. They're using colors that, um, I'm going to clean off that Viridian. I think I got it a little dirty. Um, they're using names that you would recognize in like when you go to upgrade your paints, which that's good. Because like when they call them like sunrise yellow and stuff like that, it doesn't really um, it doesn't really help you if you want to replace a color. If you see that you like a color and you want to replace it, um, this turquoise does not really look all that turquoisey to me. It's more of like a sky blue. I'm gonna get your thalo blue. So I do like that they're using like your commonplace names, but. I don't, I didn't really get a lot of joy out of using these paints, like the lack of flow, except for that fuchsia was my major, my major problem, but uh, also the grittiness, the, um, if you layer colors, it gets muddy fairly quickly. There's a lot of extenders in here. I mean, the red, that fuchsia flowed really well. 
but then when you got over to these cooler colors, they just kind of sat there, and that was kind of a, um, that was just, you know, when I'm, when I'm painting with watercolor, I want a little bit of that spontaneity, I want a little bit of that flow, maybe you don't. Maybe you want your paints to stay exactly where you put them, maybe you're working on paper that's not as sized, and you want to make it stay put, maybe these are for you. So that's why I don't want to like, I don't want to poop on anyone's party, I don't want to be like a, a bummer, but I do want to say that I do not find these to be great quality, and I, I actually had to force myself to do another painting with these because I was, um, I just didn't like them. But I mean, maybe you like that texture, it's not like a, it's not a true granulation, but if you like the look of it, then you like the look of it. And I think this these paints look the best when you don't do too much to them, if you kind of do like loose florals, they'll look good for that, um, for that type of project. But once you start layering and layering and layering, you're going to see the limitations of that chalkiness. So here are some, um, just some kind of doodle pieces that I was doing. And this is on Arches paper, so this isn't cheap paper. Can you see right there? Um, I don't know. I'm going to zoom in. I'm hoping the camera will focus. If I zoom in like that. So in here, this red, it almost looks like sand in it. It's just, it's very silty, a very silty effect. It's interesting. Um, this yellow also has that kind of sandy effect where I used it strongly. So it's like, where are you using these paints strongly with a lot of water? Um, using like a lot of pigment, a lot of water, you are going to get the settling out of this, um, this granular extender in your paint. Uh, the greens were get kind of dull when you mix them. I don't feel like you're getting a super, super vi vibrant green unless you use the green on its own and then don't do anything to it. Like this May green here, they call it a Rulian green. Um, it's got a definitely a unpleasant texture, I think. It's not like the pretty granulation that you want. Here, if you look at this where the red and the green mixed, it made this really sandy looking silty brown. You can see that kind of silty up there. This green had a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of that um, sandy texture in it. It's just not what I'm going for with the watercolor. Maybe you like that. Maybe that's something that's going to be beneficial in your work. But for me, I just didn't even want to touch these paints again. I was just, ugh. I painted a bookmark and I'm like, well, it's fine if you're going real quick and you're not going to do anything else to it. But I think if you want to, these will hinder you if you want to learn to paint watercolor in a traditional manner. Generally, you know, if a watercolor paint does not hinder your growth, and then I'm like, go for it, you know, see what colors you use, see what colors you like, and then upgrade. Like I would say the, the Milang Pretty Excellent set, that will not hinder your growth. You can learn to paint with those, you can layer, you can glaze, you can do all these things, and then as you run out of colors, you can buy a tube of professional paint that's not going to hinder you. Um, like the fan, those fan palettes, about the same price as this, those will not hinder you. The paint is nice and transparent, you can layer it, they flow, they have, a, they're just, they act like traditional watercolors. This, I feel like, is going to, it could even make you feel like you're a worse painter than you are. And paints like that, I don't recommend. Um, I think there's a lot of really good student grade paints out there on the market and ones that you can learn on and then you can upgrade to better paints and upgrade your skill as you go. These, I could, I think, could actually make you feel like you're not, if you're following a tutorial with a lot of layering and using these paints, I think that you would feel like, I'm not doing it right, or this isn't coming out right, or there's something wrong, because they're a vibrant paint. You swatch them out and you see that color, you think, oh, these must be really good quality, because look at all the color. But there's there's got to be dye boosts in there or something and, and shock because of all of that grit. And I think that... Um, this is not how I would spend $17, $18. I would definitely go for one of the fan palettes or the pretty excellent paint set that goes on sale for under $20 frequently. That would be my pick. Now, if you're going to do one layer, like a little one layer landscape um, or some loose flowers, I think it would be fine for that. But I wouldn't recommend you purchase this over so many better options on the market. This here, I yesterday's World Watercolor Month prompt was wave, and I love painting water splashing over rocks, and that was my intention. And then I'm like, you know, I just and I was ready to review these and give these a very poor review, but I'm like, no, I got to give it one more chance because I am gonna with the Artistros. It was the same thing. I did not want to use them a second longer than I had to, and I didn't want to use these again. But I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a fair try. I'm gonna do my wave painting that had in my mind and see how it goes. And actually, it was pretty promising at first. I was like, you know, these are pretty bright. These are doing pretty good. I have no problems. Then as I started to layer up, 
um, it started to get real chalky. And then I had to go, and I was painting around the white areas. And then I was like, no, I need to go in with some white. I need to perk this up because it just had gotten so cloudy and muddy. And um, yeah, I wasn't, um, I wasn't really enjoying it. The further I got onto it, I was just getting disappointed and um, stuff that I know would work with like my M grams or any of my professional paints or even some of the good student grade paints were just not working here and I don't want somebody to put a lot of time in a project you know maybe they do a quick sketch and it looks great and then they start putting more time and it doesn't look good that's because of the chalkiness of this paint it's because of the fillers and it can be quite a um, a quite a uh, it can be really confusing, I think, for a beginner watercolors because you go and you swatch these and the colors are so bright and you're excited and you see reviews and a lot of times people only swatch things in reviews because those are Tistro paints that I reviewed last year. A lot of people gave them really good reviews and um, people had bought them and, and were commenting under my video saying, I bought these because the reviews were really good. Other people gave us a really good review. I can't believe you're, you're not, you don't like these paints. Other people said they were great. From the swatch, you could say, yeah, they're great. Actually, Artistro had a better swatch card in there. So when you swatch it on their swatch card, which was cotton paper, it actually was like, yeah, that actually looks pretty good. But when you, um, when you went to paint with them and you did any layering or, you know, you're trying to do techniques where you needed the colors to flow together, like some loose flowers, they really struggled and um, and I didn't like those paints. I don't like these paints um, and I have a feeling that any paint that looks like this is probably most likely private labeled from Simi Art and um, are going to have the similar results. And it's not to say that some people aren't going to love these. I think if you were doing like a quick background on a scrapbook page or a greeting card or some project where you just wanted to splash down some color quickly, maybe you're doing some posters for a club group organization that you're trying to, you know, just make a bunch of posters with kids. Yeah, I think that would work great for that. I'm going to see, does it say non-toxic? Because this would probably be fun for children. But for if you're trying, but you know what? I would not recommend these if I had a, a student taking my watercolor classes. I used to teach children and adults watercolor. But if they were taking one of my watercolor classes and they want to learn watercolor, I would not recommend these. Um, I'm just looking to see if there's a non-toxic um, thing on the box. And these are made in China. Designed in London, made, made in China. They're, the paints that they make that I do like were made in Korea. I still can't figure out who makes them because they don't seem similar to anything else I've tried, but I don't see non-toxic on here. Uh, let me look at the brochure. Maybe it says... Because I wouldn't necessarily... Oh, we take your health. Uh, we take safety of artists and environment very seriously. Uh, the owner has asthma and young kids at home, so it's a personal matter. Uh, we chose the non-toxic paints for all of our products. We offer the highest quality in paints that conform to the toughest international certification standards. So that's um, that's from their brochure. I'm looking for the um, I'm looking for the AP non-toxic certification. I don't see any of the um, of like what is it the uh, the C. Oh, there's one European one. There's a European one and then there's the AP. And I don't see either of those certification stamps on here, but they say they're non-toxic. So I'm going to leave that buyer beware. I mean, I'm looking at this now and I'm saying this is pretty. These colors are vibrant and that is pretty. And it, But I'm already seeing, and you usually don't see the full, um, the full granulation effects until things dry. And it's more pronounced if you let it dry normally. But I'm already seeing some scaling up here where it almost looks like... Um, it looks like scale. It looks like, you know, if you get scale buildup on a coffee maker, I think it's probably the chalk uh, in the paints or some other extender that they've used to make it, to make it go further. One thing I will say is they're not very messy. So if you were getting this for like a, um, then again, it's like, I don't really recommend giving these to children because I don't know. I don't see that. I don't see a certification of non-toxic from, um, and if I, if I sound kind of num stumbly, I haven't recorded in a week. I just got back from vacation. I've been, you know, I took these with me to use. Um, but not seeing that certification on there from a, an outfit I trust, I, don't, I wouldn't say give these to your five-year-old. I also don't know your children. I don't know how your children treat art materials if they keep their fingers out of their mouths and, and all of that uh, when they're working. I mean, you can see... 
You, the scaling is kind of pronounced here. I don't know if it's showing up on camera. It doesn't look too bad, uh, too bad down here. A little bit in the green, but you know, hey, they're, they're cheap paints. Honestly, though, I think these and the Artistas are, are a little overpriced. Artistro was selling a set about this size for, no, theirs was bigger. Theirs was bigger. I think they were, they were selling this for like $25, and I think it was like 36 What is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times three is 24. Um, this is at 24 for $23 or about 17 with their discount that's currently running on Amazon. I don't think they're worth it. I, if I was going to spend $17, I would get one of the fan watercolor sets. I can show you what I mean. Um, and they have gotten quite cheap in price. And they come with a water brush and sometimes three water brushes. I'm talking about these. This style of paint. I think this is a much better deal. Um, that has more of a mixing space in it, but those are actually really hard to clean too. I'll show you. I'll, I'll demonstrate cleaning these because might as well clean it. I'm probably going to... I'm not going to keep these. Um, so it is a little bit difficult to get in those wells and clean it versus just like a flat tin or a tin with a couple of big wells that are molded into them. And because there's so much flex here, I think eventually they're going to crack and get brittle. So then you would have a situation of like maybe pulling this out, maybe spray, spray painting the inside of the tin white. Um, the tin is not super durable and high quality, but you know what? The size of this tin might be handy to put like Gansai Tanby paints in and then like maybe spray paint the top for mixing i don't know but these paints this tin uh it gets a thumbs down from me if you have these paints and you love them or you have another version from another company and you want to let me know who else is using this um let me know in the comments below i would love to hear your thoughts maybe i'm missing something and that's something that i said i think i said that in the artistro video too maybe i'm missing something but uh to me there's so many great options out there, and I think that you could do a lot better with your money. But, um, and if these were like five bucks, I'd be like, okay, for five bucks, sure, why not? Um, but I just, I, I think there's just too many negatives. I think the quality of, of them, of the packaging, of everything, and the fact that I think it could actually hinder somebody's growth as an artist. I would say only buy these if you do not, you just want to put some watercolor effects on a project, but you don't actually want to learn how to watercolor. Yeah, these would be great for that. These would be great for like doing a splash on some cardstock, making some cards, making some scrapbook pages where you just want a little sploosh of color. Scrapbook's going to be closed. It's not going to have the exposure to light, so you don't need to worry about fading. I wouldn't even make any, I wouldn't have any thoughts that these could be light fast. They seem very dye based. They actually remind me quite a bit of the Sakura Koi paints in the way they, um, in the way that they're kind of like lack of flow and they're a little bit of a, of a grittiness to them. And, you know, I, I like the Sakura Koi paints for like quick little sketches, like little postcard sketches on location and stuff like that. But once you start layering up the Koi paints, then you start to get that, that grittiness as well. But hey, if you love the Sakura Koi paints, you might like these too. However, when I first reviewed those and started using those, there weren't so many other options. And, you know, if I reviewed these paints five or ten years ago, my opinion may be more favorable about them because there weren't so many good, cheap options available. For these, I would say there are many, there are much better options. In fact, the other paints that Zen Art Supply sells are better options. So definitely keep that in mind if you are considering purchasing these paints because I think that you could do a lot better with your money. The water brush is decent. It's your typical water brush that comes included in the set. Nice point. I would say medium sized, medium to large size. I like that. My painting came out okay, but it was a struggle. And the more I did, I felt like the worse it looked because it was getting more, more gritty. And I had to go in with my Dr. Peach Martin's bleed proof white to get the, um, to get the effect of the white mist that I wanted. So it wasn't fully done with these paints. And I'll just show you my doodles in here again. I mean, that is kind of pretty, but the greens just kind of ruined it for me. I didn't get any of the little bleeds that I like. And um, yeah, that weird, that weird sandy scaling just kind of, um, just kind of put me off. I wasn't, I, I, my, actually, I have to say my review that I'm filming today is more favorable than I've been looking at these paints for the, I've had them for a couple months actually. And, um, and I've done little puttering doodles and stuff with them. I don't know what happened to those, but, um, yeah, for me, 
these are uh, these are not a recommended product. Um, I know some people get bent out of shape when I do a negative review, but hey, everything can't be great. And if everything, if all the products all of a sudden got better and they all were great, then you'd still none, they wouldn't all be great because you'd have better things to compare them to, you know. So yeah, I'd skip these if I were you guys. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and um, we'll see you next time. Happy crafting. Bye.